Hi everyone, my name is Jason Matthew. Today I am going to cover how to configure HA high, high availability on Cisco WLC. So here I have two 5520s and uh, I am going to show you how to configure HA through configuration wizard itself. So, um, so right well, left hand side I have 5520 in primary mode. That, that's the one I am planning to put it in primary mode and right hand side I have the uh, secondary, uh, secondary controller. Uh, so problem here is we have to make sure the primary up and running when we are booting up the secondary controller otherwise it will go into uh, maintenance mode. So uh, let me finish the uh, primary first then we will go to the secondary. So I am uh, terminating the auto installation feature here and I don't want to uh, uh, use that feature for uh, this one. So you can also use auto install feature to come up with the basic configuration and all that is covered in different uh, video. So here I will just talk about HA configuration. So I am going to uh, use the default system name that is mentioned here Cisco 9C72. Then uh, username admin. I am not concentrating on the uh, values what I am giving here because um, I will talk about HA here. Okay, let me fill these values here, a DSCP, lag, yes or no, it's up to you. Let me uh, set one IP here. So the infrastructure should support this and you should be having um, uh, connecti connectivity between uh, both, the, both the controllers using redundancy port. And this key palette messages are gone through both the interfaces with uh, redundancy port and the uh, uplink ports. So uh, you have to make sure both the ne network connectivities are up and running and uh, you, you should see uh, all the uh, links are up uh, on switch side and controller side. So let me put VLAN tagging here. So it's a mandatory uh, to have a, man a VLAN tagging for HA support. So from 8.2 onwards uh, I think it's 8.2 onwards. So uh, from that release onwards it's a mandatory to keep VLAN tagging to support a HSSO. So uh, it's a mandatory thing you have to keep it. Okay so here I, we have to give yes as uh, uh, HA uh, enable HA yes or no. Then uh, we can set the, uh, the HA type of this controller. So here I am going to put HA as primary. Then redundancy management IP I am going to give 9.9.11 peer redundancy I will give 9.9.9. So 12 will be uh, given to the controllers uh, management interface so I am going to give 13 as a peer redundancy management. Virtual gateway address let me just put default value it's not recommended but still it's a it's a default value I am going to set here. So all these values are dummy values, don't, um, don't give more importance to that, I'm just giving something not relevant here. Um, radius server, I'm not going to configure it, I'm going to keep the default values here. NTP server, no I'm not configuring it, system time, happy version 6, no, and yes. So this will reboot the controller but it will take some time to reboot it. So meanwhile let me configure the uh, secondary controller here. So system name is this one, admin. Let me use uh, 14 here. Uh, sorry, uh, 13, 12 here, sorry. So we used 9.10 for the management interface, 9.11 for uh, redundancy management. Then um, 12 will be given to the management interface of uh, secondary. Then we'll configure 13 for the redundancy port.
So uh, here it's asking for uh, HA unit type. So primary is already taken. So secondary is the one you have to type it here. Then redundancy management IP address we have to use 9.9.9.13 .9 that we configured on the other side <coughs> uh, for a secondary. So uh, peer will be 9.9.9.11. .9 then virtual IP I'm not going to change it. So multicast address. Okay, so now I'm going to save this configuration, but if this reboot finishes before the primary, it will not find the primary to do the bulk sync and it will go into a maintenance mode. So let's see who is, who is going to come up fast. It uh, depends on the primary availability. It will just go and uh, make a peer connectivity and it will download the config and bulk sync of config will happen and secondary will come as a hot standby controller. So let's see how uh, these two are coming up. Uh, I will wait for some time. So um, HA, uh, so in uh, wireless LAN controller, we are not talking about uh, virtually running two controllers in background. It's a, basically it's running uh, as a single controller. Management IP will be shared between these two. And uh, the entire configuration will be uh, coming through your um, through your uh, peer uh, sync. So problem here is when we talk about two controllers running with same IP there are chances of having duplicate IP address and all those things. So for avoiding those kind of situations is not sending all the packets through a secondary uh, WAN port sorry the uplink. So it's uh, it's only keep alive are limited to that port and uh, it will not have any kind of activity on the uh, interfaces because it's like a interface that can be uh, used for a failover scenario. So, so this is how uh, we configure through configuration wizard. That booting is going to take some time, and uh, let's see how it's going to come up. So, uh, to get this peer connectivity up and running in proper way, we have to make sure the backside uh, interfaces are connected. RP ports are connected each other. And RP ports are mandatory to uh, have this HA connectivity, otherwise it will not detect anything. So, so as you can see here, um, negotiation, role negotiation with peer is starting on the primary side. So it's going to uh, search for the primary for 120 seconds. So with this timing, if you are not seeing the peer coming in active state in the network, it will not be able to establish the uh, uh, HA, uh, HA pairing between these two. So this uh, initiation role negotiation message is going to peer and our peer is still booting. So it will wait for 120 seconds and after that if it's not able to find it, it will skip that part and it will go, uh, go to the next step. So let's see how our secondary is going to boot up. So I don't think it will finish it in 120 seconds but um, if it's not able to find it, it will go, <coughs> it will it will just skip this uh, session and it will uh, continue the booting on primary side. So um, when we talk about HA, uh, this this one is uh, doing that pulsing in background and uh, both, both the system will have same kind of set of configuration. So, that is going to give some kind of limitation also in the uh, background because you have two devices and uh, there are some limitations like whenever this bulk sync is happening in background you can't make any changes on primary or secondary and you don't have telnet ssh and all <coughs> directly available with full functionality on secondary and service port you have to configure service port for secondary through redundancy port a redundancy uh, controller, primary controller, otherwise you can't access that device. And in GUI also you have some limitations in GUI when controllers are uh, running in HA. So, um, so when you're running in, uh, controllers, Cisco controllers in HA, we have to make sure 
we have all those things taken care of so even in console there are some uh, limitation okay so uh, this controller booted up saying that peer wlc is not reachable so because our peer uh, wlc is still in booting so we got our controller show redundancy summary you can see here sso is enabled but local state is active Pre state is un unknown that means peer is not sending any key values or it's not able to connect with the uh, secondary controller then unit uh, unit uh, is shown as primary uh, this is the uh, primary controller in the HA uh, redundancy state not redundant because the primary is available but secondary is still waiting bulk sync so this bulk sync never happened because secondary is not up so let's wait for secondary to complete the boot then once this booting, uh, booting is completed and if it's fine the pre peer controller we can see how it's going to uh, help you to find uh, establish this HA connectivity once this HA pairing is done uh, both the controllers will be having identical uh, configuration it will be synced in background and if something went wrong on uh, primary the secondary will uh, automatically switch it over and it will make sure uh, your uh, network is uh, not having any impact because of that so it can cause because of uh, any network related issues any uh, interface related issues or power failure or hardware failure any condition you will have a hardware hardware redundancy in background so now the secondary is booting up let him start researching okay it's already uh, found the controller and uh, active standby so it's rebooting one second sorry so message to peer found the peer so here this guy secondary already found the peer and starting uh, ping then uh, rebooting system reason SML not transferred in active standby so um, so this this particular stage this guy found that our controller uh, is available primary controller is available and um, and our controller is rebooting uh, after finding because this is the first time this controller is finding the uh, finding the primary controller so it need a reboot to find uh, uh, like restart the LVAP and everything because once this redundancy uh, part is uh, came into picture and if you are not uh, not a primary controller it has to reboot because only after rebooting it will stop uh, listening to LVAP and all, all those things so LVAP and CAPVAP then uh, it's restarting the controller here so as you can see here t secondary is rebooting so uh, this HA implementation requires a lot of reports uh, <laughs> to get into the uh, right mode so um, so thing is so bo both are uh, going to work as a single controller right so it has to make sure you don't have any kind of duplicate things in background so for an example as I said right if you are coming with same IP address from two hardwares into two different switches because you will always try to have uh, maximum redundancy available right so uh, you will have two ports if you have 10 gig two ports in 5520 you will be connecting both uh, into your network and it can be two different switches uh, in a stackable model or it can be on same switch different slots so it can be anything and power supply also you will have two different power supplies coming from two sources so all those things will be there to control your uh, redundancy model so while designing something with HA so uh, you have to make sure you have complete redundancy on all the areas like including power supply networking uh, your hardware side everything so let's see how uh, secondary is going to come let me uh, take a pause here let this uh, reboot completes and come as a secondary portion here so I'll take a pause here.
Okay, so now you can see here that XML configuration is selected, but at the same time you got a uh, message on the other side saying that your console is blocked. Configuration blocked as standby WLC is still booting up. You will be notified once configurations are unblocked. So basically, <coughs> the secondary controller is trying to uh, use the XML configuration in the uh, controller. And when whenever you are in HM mode, you have to get the configuration from the primary. So that bulk thing should be done in background, then only that XML uh, fetching part will be completed on the secondary. So here, now you can see that uh, it's got unblocked. That means your controller bulk thing is done. So let me log in into the controller, then show you redundancy summary here. So now you can see here, okay, let me log in into this console. Now you can see that this host name itself is changed to standby. This is the host standby mode uh, in the secondary side. So, so here you can see um, SSO is enabled. This guy is running as a standby host and this one uh, is running as active. Then uh, prior status is standby hot and here you can see it's active. Then a unit type, it's a secondary IP, inherited IP license count as 50 because it's the uh, license count came from the other controller and it's uh, 50 IP licenses are uh, in sync. And unit ID is this one and it's uh, running mode is SSO and mobility MAC address is this one. And uh, bulk sync status is completed and average redundancy where uh, okay this is the latency information uh, about your uh, network connectivity so uh, here you can see your uh, controller is done with the bulk sync and all those things are uh, really fine in background so let me do one thing let me try to uh, config uh, port admin mode or sorry all disable so i'm bring down okay so you can't you can't disable it from uh, this side so uh, we will do one thing we will uh, cover this um cover this ha failover scenario in uh, different videos so uh, here uh, you can see the ha came up uh, in the right way with configuration wizard itself and both are uh, both are running in HM mode with active and standby mode so um, we will uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give one more video on how to configure the HA on a controller that is not configured through configuration wizard how to enable HA for an example you have already have a network interface uh, sorry a network WLC and you want to add a HA pair on that particular WLC so I'll I'll uh, uh, show you that in different video how to configure how to add a HA pair into your same system so only the limitation is you have to have the same hardware type because HA is not supported with a mix of devices, device types. So uh, the PID should be same and you can also order HKU uh, um, uh, HA devices uh, part number. So it depends on the part number you can uh, go for only HA unit. So um, let me let me cover that in different videos. So hope this one will help you to configure this HA uh, through the configuration wizard itself. Thank you for watching. See you in 